Hello everyone. Uh, hope you have been staying safe since my last episode. Uh, as in the last episode, we had many useful tips on professional networking. In today's segment, we will be talking something about uh, the importance of scientific publishing. And for this, I am very pleased to welcome our guest for today's episode, Dr. Dhanraj Shinde. Uh, I would request Dr. Dhanraj Shinde to please go ahead and introduce himself. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for having me, Dr. Kurtbagi. Uh, so I completed uh, my PhD uh, from National Chemical Laboratory, uh, India. Uh, then after, after that, I moved to Monash University, Australia to do my first postdoctoral study. And currently, I am doing postdoc in New Mexico State University. So regarding work, uh, throughout my uh, uh, research career, mostly I focused on carbon-based materials and energy storage applications. More precisely, graphene synthesis by various routes and related applications. On these topics, I have published several articles and few patents. Also, during my postdoctoral tenure, I got opportunities to contribute in writing few grants. Thank you very much. Having known Dr. Shinde for more than a decade now, I know he has a credible experience in a variety of writing skills, writing scientific articles, say patents, or a lot of scientific proposals and grants. Uh, so, uh, having said, uh, Dr. Shinde, what would you suggest our viewers or our researchers to focus on when during their PhD and their uh, postdoctoral research? Uh, yeah, this is this is a very good question. So basically, postdoc is considered as a bridge between PhD and a job. So the key message is to make that uh, bridge uh, stronger. So far as uh, learning is concerned, it is very broad topic and it. I believe it depends on individual's uh, background and which area they, they are working. But in more general term, I would emphasize on working to improve soft skills, basically where we always spend less time on that and spend more time in doing uh, lab experiments, uh, particularly focusing more on the writing and selling your story. That is really important. Apart from that, mentoring undergrad students or working with uh, the different level of students, that really helps, as well as generating new projects, working on new idea, that is also important. Basically, that helps to broaden your chances of publishing, and that should be the main focus in your postdoctoral studies. That's a golden message. It is very well said. Uh, postdoc is a bridge between a PhD and your career. So build strong bridges, don't burn them. So definitely, work the best and make the best of that opportunity for learning yourself and trying to be independent. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shinde, for saying and putting it in that way. Uh, so now that we have been talking about uh, the importance of uh, writing or uh, scientific writing, uh, how would you uh, differentiate between publishing during a PhD research and uh, that uh, during a postdoctoral research? <clears throat> yeah, Miss. Uh, if you consider uh, uh, ignoring the PhD and postdoctoral research, at the end of the day, publication is very important. And uh, uh, coming back to your question, uh, during PhD, of course, uh, there are uh, ready-made ideas and mentor is there to help you uh, in terms of the writing and how to push publication to the next level. But when you come to the postdoc, uh, probably you need to be more independent and spend time on uh, improving uh, your soft skill and utilize them in terms of the publications. Uh, in, in that, to just add one more point, uh, many people just focus on the uh, impact factor. They say that, oh, this is really low impact factor journal and this uh, on that line, so much discussion. But I would say that the early career researchers, those who are in the PhD, probably they should focus on writing so many different manuscripts so that they can really understand what is going on in the research field and slowly uh, they can really understand more about the research and spend quality time about the improving quality of the publication in the later stage of their career. 
but the initial stage i think publishing is really important yes because uh, what students do is they rate their uh, rate themselves uh, as to the impact factor in which they're publishing their research yes. so yes. your message clearly says disregard the impact factor in your initial stages because it will just give you some confidence to learn and to grow and to enhance your uh, writing skills and definitely as you go uh, down uh, go up the food chain or go down the lane you definitely will uh, have that confidence in writing better uh, uh, manuscripts and better uh, articles and that could be published in uh, better impact factor journals but definitely when you have when you have started learning it is always necessary to come forward come ahead and publish that piece of work exactly. may it be in any lower impact factor journal yes yeah. uh, that's that's a very important uh, message right there so when we say we still want to go ahead and publish in any journal regardless of the impact factor there's always a confusion or inhibition in a student's mind or any researcher's mind what piece of my work is publishable or on the other hand if i am working with some innovative idea is that piece of work patentable how do i judge that what is the judgment call on that <clears throat> yeah this is a, a million dollar question Thank you. Uh, prob probably there is no single answer to that uh, because uh, in general uh, people say that you should always sell the key messages or key, key results in, in the manuscript but uh, probably what is key result uh, that is probably the debatable topic nobody knows and it depends on the type of group and where that group is located funding so many different aspects associated with that kind of question. But in general, of course, you need to find what are the key messages and you need to write story uh, revolving around these, these key messages and then try to convince the reviewer. This is your hypothesis. This is the, these are the experimental findings and what, what you are trying to say. But when, when, you are, <clears throat> when we come back to the patenting part, that is the entirely uh, different ball game. Uh, so uh, we need to keep in mind that patent costs money. So we have to be very careful. University invest huge money to file patent and even to protect uh, in the uh, in in future as well. So for patent, you need to consider or we need to consider uh, three uh, important points. The first one is <coughs> uh, novelty part is very important. So we, we need to look into the a very good background check and what are the current state of arts available and uh, see where you stand in terms of the current state of arts. So novelty part is very important. Next one is the whether there is any commercial uh, potential for your technology that you need to see carefully. And the third part, part is the non-obviousness. You need to consider that your patent or which you are going to file is not just incremental, but definitely uh, it is kind of breakthrough technology. So in that case, uh, just to simplify that, if I take an example, for example, the technical solution, a new generator is definitely patentable. But if someone is coming with a mathematical formula and is telling that how a generator produces electricity, probably that is not patentable. On top of that, if you go to the next level, uh, uh, if someone is using a generator on a bicycle to, to make it uh, as an automated uh, device, definitely it is patentable. But uh, if someone is uh, simply by schematics uh, telling a story that how you can sell the generator, probably that is not patentable. So of course, uh, this is an entirely different field of research and you need to invest huge amount of time to understand subtleties of that. But I think this is uh, some sort of a uh, key message uh, what, what I uh, tried to give. Yeah, thank you very much. So in short, I would say uh, if you have a good data set to support your claims, you can go ahead and publish your piece. But when it comes to patenting, make sure you are 
uh, patenting your idea and it is worthy of every penny that is costed for patenting it. Exactly. Uh, right. So that means be your own judge at this point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very, very much for explaining it in this way. And I love the generator example you gave. It simplified a lot of things for a lot of people. Uh, uh, you cannot uh, do some incremental research and say it's patentable. It could be publishable. So a uniqueness and a innovative idea is definitely necessary for patenting any idea or any technology. Correct. Yeah, that was very easy to now understand. Thank you very much. So before we leave, what would be your take home message for all our viewers and researchers during these strange times? Yes, uh, uh, right now, definitely kind of a strange time. Uh, and uh, when you particularly watch media regularly, then you get that kind of uh, feeling. But on the flip side, if you uh, uh, if you if you spend good time and work remotely and uh, uh, basically try to improve your uh, soft skill sets, basically uh, reading scientific contents, novels, and books, I think that is that is really going to be uh, helpful in your uh, career. And uh, for the young researchers, I would say that uh, most of the time, including me also, when when I was doing PhD, we used to focus only on the small tiny piece of work and always uh, miss the bigger picture. So during this uh, slowdown period, it is a very good opportunity to revise your research problem and find the missing links. And at the end of the day, always remember, uh, be optimistic irrespective of the, any situation. Yes, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have to think about the long-term goals and not uh, keep ourselves in these uh, short-term uh, anxieties or short-term stress we are going through right now. So uh, Dr. Shinde is uh, recommending and advising all of us to go ahead and try to uh, look at what your scientific neighbor is doing and uh, try to get a feel of the research apart from your uh, areas of research. Don't tunnelize your vision when you are looking at uh, any scientific uh, area. And that will broaden your, your scope of thinking and that will definitely broaden your scope in the way you write your publications, in the way you put down your thoughts as a scientist. So with all this said, I would uh, encourage you to please go ahead, like, share and subscribe my uh, channel and please comment below for any uh, requests on interactive sessions you want to go ahead and have with any of my uh, speakers on the show and I will be more than happy to arrange it for you and till then stay home stay safe stay strong and keep rolling thank you very very much thank you